over the last couple months, there have been some um, some serious things going on. I won't say months, I'll say years. Um, and recently, as I've been just spending time with God, He's been giving me some revelation. Let me just tell you a little bit about my walk with God. So, how I hear from God is in a lot of different ways. Sometimes God speaks to me through numbers. Like I'll see a number repeatedly. And um, He's telling me to do something. He's prompting me to do something. Some of you may have been seeing numbers and you don't exactly know what that means. Um, I'm going to have a series of videos that I'm going to do on that. Um, there is a couple people online that I watch who um, have some very, um, I, I should say, just some, uh, God is speaking through them about numbers and they minister to me. And um, some of that stuff I'll be sharing. Um, and of course, giving them credit. Um, so, he speaks to me through nature, um, animals, sometimes just, um, I don't want to go into all of that, but I, I will give you some supernatural experiences that I have experienced in some videos to come, um, because I want you to understand that um, God is not this box that we've um, put him in, and for those of you who don't even believe in God, um, let me just say something to you. Again, I like to always give people this challenge. Um, if you don't believe that God exists, uh, you can do like I did, even when I understood that God exists. One day I just asked him, show me a sign. And when that wasn't enough, I asked for another sign. Anybody been there? And when that wasn't enough, I asked for another sign. Until I couldn't dispute the signs. So, Here's something, um, so I'm saying that, you know, so God speaks to me in a lot of different ways, but here's, here's, um, what God has been saying to me lately. Um, there's a verse in the Bible that says, be still and know that I am God. So when I hear from God, it's usually when I am still. When I say still, sometimes it just means still exactly like I'm doing right now just sitting still sometimes it means in my um, breathing and I'm, I'm present right I'm not thinking about doing 200 other things and listening to the radio on my cell phone and all of this um, just a quick uh, commercial for cell phones right um, they're the devil They're a distraction. They steal, kill, destroy. Intimacy, family time, all of that. So, um, I'll, I'll, let me just give you a little example since we we're talking about where I'm going with this is I'm talking about children and how important they are to God and how we need to protect them because this is what he's been talking to me about lately. So, during this Christmas storm we had in Buffalo, um, blizzard of 2022 um, the spiritual warfare that happened during Christmas um, in Buffalo New York 2022 um, my son was we were at my mother-in-law's where she actually had power because we had to leave our house and go to her house. I'll tell you about that another story too. Um, testimony story. So my son was texting all of his friends who I guess were places where they had power. And it was Christmas. We were all together and I told him to put his phone down. Because I thought to myself, you know, he he's not He's not present. But then God said to me, you know, not only is he not present, but the kids on the group chat aren't present either. So, 
The devil was getting a, you know, a combo deal on that one. You know, at a time when people are supposed to be together, spending time loving each other, and this type of thing. Um, the kids weren't present. So we didn't get the joy of who they were during that time because they weren't present. And I would assume that in some households it wasn't just the kids that weren't present. So, said that to say this. I was having a uh, conversation with God the other day. Um, as I was walking down the street, just kind of just talking to him, like I'm talking to you. And um, he was talking about abortion. Because I was, I've, I've been just seeing so much stuff about abortion, abortion, abortion. It's like this whole agenda, right? And um, I was, I was asking God, like, God, like, why? Why would anyone want to harm children? And he took me back about a month or two ago to this certain, this certain company that had been outed for their participation and basically what would equate to uh, child pornography and child uh, what was, I don't know what you would even call it exploiting children right and then the umbrella of companies that were connected to them that you should still be boycotting that you should not be giving your money to right see how they just kind of push that thing under the rug how they just kept flooding us with news and distracting us with other stuff so that they could still do their evil, right? And they came up with all these fake apologies. And now one of the people who's married to one of the people who owns or works or heads one of these companies has a big movie coming out, which also is a lust-filled uh, film if you even want to call it that. So, I was just, you know, I was talking with God about all of this. And, you know, this is this is like a, I mean, it's a really heavy thing. It's a heavy, heavy thing. And, um, I was like, what, like, what is this? Like, what, what is going on? It's like, he said to me, abortion is child sacrifice. What? Abortion is child sacrifice. I'm me having this conversation and I'm like, so you're telling me that when they take these children, the woman, in her womb, she takes her child to this place, this evil place, with evil people wanting to do evil things for profit, that that is child sacrifice. Yes, how so? Follow the money. Follow the money. Like what what do they how do they dispose of these children? And their children, so you know. Ask yourself that question. How do they dispose of the bodies of these children that they murder? So, I don't know the answer to that question. I really don't want to think about that. 
but also so what happens with these parts is there a market for that what could there be a market what about the blood could there be a market for that Could there be a big enough market for that, that that a whole government, a whole country, or countries would allow it? Could there be incentives for doctors, nurses, clinics to do such a thing because they could profit? Could they experiment? on these children for the sake of science that's 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 child sacrifice I just, I just want to say something like I, I don't want any woman who's ever had an abortion to feel like first of all the God that I serve Jesus Christ does not condemn he says there's no condemnation that being said he also says that if you commit a sin, that you can be forgiven. What kind of God would forgive someone of murder? A loving God. Because he understands the circumstance. He understands that there's so much marketing out there telling you that this is okay from adults who are supposed to know better. And there are people who are adults who are supposed to know better who would encourage such things. Also, you can you can be forgiven for that. You just need to repent for it. And what is repenting? Repenting is when you say you're sorry to God. Ask for his forgiveness. Here's the good the, the big part about that though. And then stop the behavior. Stop the behavior. You can't repeat the pattern keep doing it and keep saying sorry that's not repentance repentance is I'm sorry and change the behavior will God forgive you if you do it multiple times yes he will but let me say this to you the enemy doesn't let you forget God forgets he says he throws it in a sea of forgetfulness. Or I might be mixing that up, but he 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 forgives you and he'll forget it. But the enemy will never let you forget it. That's why you need God. Because the enemy will keep putting these thoughts in your head, making you mad, making you angry. When you see those little babies on the street and you're thinking my baby could have been. When you're seeing those commercials on TV, the enemy will be in your head. And that's him, so you know. That's not God. God doesn't do that. The enemy will do that. So when you see those little um, clothes in the store or your little cousins and that kind of thing or you see young people achieving things and you think this he or she could have been if I had not 
That's not from God. Some of them are legitimate thoughts. But those are also there's also consequences to choices, right? And one of those consequences is having to live with the what ifs. But the God won't beat you down with that. So let me go back. We must protect our children. We must protect our children because we live in a world right now that's confusing them. Here's another reason. Whether you believe the Bible, read the Bible or not, I'm going to give you a scripture. Matthew 18, 6, from the New International Version. It says, if anyone, anyone, meaning you, me, causes one of these little ones, one of these children, if anyone causes one of these children, those who believe in me to stumble, the children who believe in God. Remember, children are the closest thing to God that we ever get. We talk ourselves out of God. Right? It says if anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, stumble, if you trip them up, stumble, mentally, physically, spiritually, any way, he says, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. I'm going to repeat that. If anyone causes one of these little ones, his children, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. What is a millstone? A millstone is a, it's a rock, a stone, but it's a, it's just a large stone, a large stone. They use millstones to grind stuff like corn or you know, things like that to grind. You know, they usually they're parts of machines that grind stuff. So, because of the sharpness and the, the weight, they're able to grind and cut stuff. So, he's saying it would be better for you to have one of these large cutting stones hung around your neck. Not, wait a minute, if that wasn't enough, not just hung around your neck, but and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty horrible. But he's saying that's the better option than what he's going to do to you. If you cause them to stumble. So. Where are you going with this? Let's bring it back. So. There was a story online. Where this, this guy. It was viral. This guy. Went and confronted a teacher. Who had his little boy. Told his little boy that it was okay for him to wear a dress. And then had him wear the dress. A dress. Let me repeat it. If anyone causes one of these little ones. Those who believe in me to stumble. It would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. God, God is not playing when it comes to his children. 
When you do stuff to children, it's like you're doing it to God. You know, they're so close to his heart. That's why the enemy tries to attack young people. If you're wondering, like, in you know, spiritually or, or just physically, why is the enemy always trying to attack children? Like, why, what is it about children? Think about this for a second. Let, let's go back to the, the other topic we were talking about. You, at the time of conception and the, the delivery, you are hosting a spiritual being. Someone who is fresh and even still connected to heaven in ways that we will never understand. But let me give you a little insight. The smile on a mother or father's face when they first see their, born, their, their newborn child or even just the... the uh, sonogram of their child spiritually connects you to joy heavenly joy think about that for a second that is a spiritual thing there's power in that and the enemy knows it it's like the purest form of life and there's power in that. And the enemy knows that. Right? And he knows God's love for children. That's why he goes after them. To spite God. To spite us. And because he knows that every child that God brings into this world has a purpose. And most of their... Most, just think about this. If you have a child and they never accomplish anything in their life, talk about they never get that triple degree, the masters, uh, and all of that stuff, but they make everyone in their community happy. You ever read one of those stories or see one of those sad stories where, unfortunately, some young person, there was a story in, um, Unfortunately, a very sad story about a young girl in Syracuse who was 11 years old, who her life was sadly taken. She was just walking down the street going to the store for her mother. Horrible story. Horrible story. No, she didn't have any degrees. She didn't have a high-paying job. I don't even know what her grades were like in school but here's one thing I know the thing that her mother and everyone said about this child was that she brought joy to everyone she came in contact with and that was stolen from the world that's what the enemy wants. He doesn't want joy in the world. He doesn't want peace in the world. He doesn't want love in the world. Can you imagine? I, I can't even imagine. I just pray for that that mother, that God will return to her a million fold, that he will give her double for her trouble, her and her family, and for all of her classmates and But I just want you to know, like, we have to protect our children. Like, we have, we, we are creating an environment through horrible television and, and music and all this, that, that, that is creating the opposite of these beautiful, spiritual human beings that the Lord has blessed us with. And it's, it's, it's not, children aren't doing this. Children, 
children don't have access to guns unless adults give them access to guns. Right? They don't have access to pornography. They don't have access to um, violent video games. They don't have access to horrible music that uh, degrades women and men and, and, and spews hatreds and murder and all of that unless adults give them access to it. Full circle back to the cell phone. The young people in my life, when they're around me, I ask them to put their cell phones away because they're now on my time. Am I being arrogant? No. God gave me a revelation that a lot of the young people in this world will not even be able to hear God's voice because they're distracted with their cell phones. I'm not saying I'm God or they're going to hear His voice through me. Hopefully they will hear His voice through me. But what I'm saying is when they're in your presence, they should be present. And even if you're not saying anything, at least God can talk to them. At least they can be social. At least they can be the light they were brought to be. Right? So, again, that being said, we have to protect our children. And I just want to go, I want to go back to this again. Teaching children about, um, confusing children about who they are, what they have, and what they're supposed to do with it. What their gender is, right? Who they are, what they have, are they male or female, and what they're supposed to do with this beautiful creation that God gave them. Confusing them about that is, in my opinion, child abuse. And those that do it, whether you know it or not, there are consequences. There are grave consequences for that. And you too should repent. And if you don't, there are consequences for that. Let me just repeat that thing to you. God said, not I said, God said, if anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. God created male and female. I said in the Bible, look it up. Google it before they change it. All right? Like they did the definition of a woman, which every woman should be insulted by, and I'm sure a lot of them are. Um, we got to protect our children. I think by any means, like I, I'm really like Malcolm X on that one, by any means necessary.